So most people know that I'm not a professional YouTuber. I run a data science consultancy and development agency called Supertype, where we service enterprise clients in the areas of analytics, engineering, and help implement machine learning systems in production. I also run a data science school that I started back in 2016, six years ago, close to seven years ago, where I teach companies and students skills in R and Python, data visualization, machine learning, and the sorts. Now, I'm also a head of data science and principal consultant with numerous companies through the consultancy. So my calendar is generally quite filled out from all these activities, not even considering my YouTube activities. This year, I'm launching a fellowship program that you can check out at fellowship.supertype.ai. It's still under construction and we're still actively in development mode, but that should give you a sense of how busy my days are. So to keep my sanity, I use a task manager and to-do app. And I want to share with you why I think Task Warrior is really a game changer if you want to take your productivity game to the next level. And that's not even considering the fact that it's free and open source, meaning even if I want to sell you on it, I can't. There's literally nothing to sell you on because it's free this is a task manager built to be recession proof and in economic downturns it's the best time to invest in your productivity while moving out of proprietary systems also i need to say that i don't get paid for recommending it so highly in fact if i want to add free and open source and all the other nice things about it to the list this wouldn't be a 10 big reasons for why task for a video it would be maybe 20 or 30 different reasons so i'm going to instead be respectful of your time and focus on 10 key reasons why task warrior will change your productivity game in 2023 and when it's not kidding when he says that he strive to be the very best. Number one, keeping everything in the terminal. You're watching this video, which means you're likely a software engineer or somebody who programs and spend quite some time in the terminal. Task Warrior lives in the terminal. So if you love Wim, you can extend it or you can use one of its ecosystem tools for the Wim key bindings to manage your tasks, to add your tasks, rearrange your tasks, mark them as done, undone, etc. Now, one of those tools that I use in conjunction with uh, Task Warrior is WIT, so V I T, and you can do it by going ahead and installing it. So you can say pip install vit vit. And I already have that installed. So you can see on my screen, I'm gonna clear the screen right now. And I can just activate it calling vit. And this is basically task warrior. You can see there's a six task shown, 274 tasks completed. So in total, there's 280 tasks. I give you execution time. There is no context that I'm setting. I will talk about context later, but I can use Wim key bindings like hjkl. I could move it up and down. I could hit P and it asked me to give a project to it. I could put super type and then I'll update that with pro uh, project super type. And if I want to change that, I could say super type 2 and it updates that as well. So I'm going to change it back to super type. And there you go. You could hit on E, goes into the edit mode, and you could edit it directly with your editor. So I'm using Wim here. I could change things like adding tags to it. So hitting W to the words. And let's say I want to add this. I want to say and do some post editing. I could do that if I want to, right? Uh, if I hit on U, it just undo that. So basically just play no win. And if you want to quit, I don't want to save any of that. So I'm just say uh, colon Q. It says no edits were detected. Press enter to continue. I can go back in here. So you enter commands just like colon, just like in Vim, and you say help. And you give you all the different commands. So a lot of these commands will look very familiar to you. If you have any experience with Vim at all, you see GG that's moving to the top and a capital G moving to the bottom. And then you have a slash to search forward. So all of this um, looks very familiar. You could change the task priority using command P. So if I want to, I could go to this and I can say command P, shift P, and it asks me to give a priority. There's a high, medium, medium, low, and now. Well, if this is quite important to me, I want to put H, I could do that and it will update that. And now it adds a priority to that. So VIT, VIT stands for Virtual Interactive Task Warrior and it provides a full screen terminal interface just like what you see me do on the screen. And if you have just five minutes to sit down and do some task management, clean up some old tasks or do your weekly review, we will talk about more about reviews later, but you could do all of that directly using Bing key bindings. So that's really cool, right? Now, number two, task management system as a dot file. I'm gonna give you a quick uh, idea of what my task looks like right now. So this is my task. I have six tasks. And also, by the way, I have this deep integration into my uh, terminal. So you see that um, the total task is listed right here. I'm in the Python virtual environment called Live OS. So this is the name of my virtual environment. I have six tasks remaining. Uh, it prints out that information as well. So what I can do is I can manage all of these tasks directly in the terminal. And the management system itself is safe as a dot file. That's, that's great as well. So the whole task warrior configuration is just one simple file. And in fact, I'm going to show it to you. Um, that's actually going to be in. I'm going to use bat to print that out. That's going to be in my home directory. So that's the right one. So this is the configuration file, all of them in one dot file. So you see the themes that I'm using, you see the different uh, settings. I'll talk about some of this later and we go in there and modify some of these op uh, options here. 
but that is the task forward configuration file. And having them as a dot file has so many benefits because your entire configuration can be properly version controlled. This is actually on my uh, version control system. So you could persist it somewhere on a different machine. You could just uh, clone it and have the same configuration. So suppose you like my setup or my customizations or my themes, or my task management system, anything, right? You can just copy and paste this file into your own system and you have the exact same setup. You can fork it on GitHub, push your own changes, and then you can pull requests back to me. So the whole idea of configuration as a dot file, I think that's a very attractive idea. And that's something that you don't really get from proprietary closed system. Now, instead of going that, I'm gonna just go into using Weem to open that up and I'm gonna try and modify a few things because point number three is about creating your own task attributes, creating a productivity system that really works for you. So everybody has a productivity system that works optimally for them and taking into account their own lifestyle choices, working habits and commitments. So for example, me and my wife just bought a new house and we're moving into the new house this week and we have a lot to prepare and organize. So moving house is a pretty big undertaking. So when I create a task, I want it to be tracked. Uh, for example, an extra large task, I want it to be XL. So what I can do is I can go into my task RC file and this is my file, right? And I could modify this by creating my own custom attributes. So this is UDA, it stands for user defined attributes. So when I now create a task, I can now assign and say there is something called the effort and the size of the effort, whether it's a small task, a medium task, a large task, extra large task, or double XL. So for example, I told you that this week we're moving houses. That's a pretty large task. So I give it an XL in terms of effort. So with Task Warrior, I can create all these user defined attributes and I can use that to filter my task later on. For my own system, I have one tracking effort. I even give it my own colors. So these are the colors. And I have another one that is tracking the uh, score. So this is this one is effort, the one I'm just highlighting here. And this is the score. And I give it my own label. I say score, give it a trophy emoji, and then I give it a coefficient. And because this is numeric, I don't actually have the different uh, categorical levels. I don't have the different factor levels. I just have numeric, it's a score. So if I complete this, how much score do I add to my productivity gains? So in a way, I could track how productive I am uh, over a certain period of time, over a defined period, just looking at the score. So that's how much it matters to me, right? That's the impact of, of the task. And the effort itself is telling me how much work do I have to put in to get the task done. So this is a string because it has five different values and this is a numeric. I could also define my own colors for different projects. For example, here I run two companies, SuperType and Algorithma. Algorithma is a data science bootcamp. Um, I could create a task and put it under the project called Algorithma and it would give, this, this, uh, give it this color. And same thing for SuperType. I could also have a few other things. I could say urgency. I could influence the urgency of a task. I say that if a project belongs to a pro if a task belongs to a project under algorithm or super type, then I want to add the score by one, for example, right? This adds a bit more urgency to the task. And I could then filter uh, tasks looking at projects, looking at different efforts, or looking at different scores, or looking at different kind of urgency, and then filter for them, sort for them. I could do that and then decide on which task I want to tackle next. Okay, speaking of filtering, it brings me to point number four. Combined with the UDA that I just created here, I can very effectively filter my tasks. For example, let me quit out of this task RC file. I'm not gonna modify anything, so I'm gonna just say quit. But I could filter my task, for example, to look at all the tasks where the effort is medium, for example, right? I wanna look at tasks where medium. And I could do that, and it would show me all the tasks where effort would be medium. I could also do task effort and I can maybe combine them and I can say XL. So any task that is huge XL with the tag of let's say home. So this is going to filter all the tasks that has a home tag. So I could tag each task uh, and I can have multiple tags on, on top of that. I can say any task that has the home tag and effort is XL. And it will show me all the tasks that I've marked as extra large and also tag as home. If you pull up the docs and you read through it, um, it's actually very powerful. A filter is a set of command line arguments that specify a set of tasks and filters can range from being very simple to very complex. So you can absolutely chain this. You can say, for example, home and then count how many of them are there. So you can say how many tasks are there in the project home and it tells you 19 of them. Uh, how many pending tasks are there and count them and it tells you 38. For example, this will chain and say any task that is in the home project but doesn't have the work tag. Okay, this is any project and without the work tag. So you could have all those uh, different and or all conditions. And regular expression is also supported. So this is great for a lot of people who are used to writing regex. And if you're a programmer, uh, there's a great chance you heard of regex. You probably have some familiarity with it. So you can use it in here as well. So when you look at all this powerful filtering system and you combine that, uh, you could end up writing something like effort equals to, I don't know, equal effort equals to M. And then you can say score equals to three. I can say, I want to have anything to do with me moving houses. 
that's what we've been doing the last one week and then I want to remove anything that has to the tag of contractor because that's not actionable on my part. I don't have access to my contractor right now and I want to have any kind of task that is related to moving houses but not involving my contractor. I can minus that and then I can say within the project of I don't know, let's say house moving, right? So this will give me a, uh, any task that I can reasonably do within four hours because I know that because it's effort M. And since it's a medium sized task, right? We have a score of three, which means it's quite high priority. And it's tagged as moving, but not tagged uh, as contractor. If this is a Sunday, I don't want to bother my contractor. I could just filter for that and remove, con remove any task that has the contractor dependency on it. So a lot of people think that they have a great task manager because they can filter by text, but task where it really takes it to a new level. And you can filter by any attributes you want and you can create your own attributes. You can use date times with it. You can combine it using regex or regular expressions. This isn't your mom and pop uh, to-do list app. This is a task management system that is really designed for people who are serious about productivity, who want to filter like their life depends on it. If between two meetings this evening, I have about 20 minutes to squeeze in, I can pull up Task Warrior and filter for a small size task. I could say any task I can do within if I have access, for example, this is anything within 20 minutes, I can do it within 20 minutes, I go do it. And number five is task server. The This is free syncing with Task Warrior. It says Task Warrior Synchronization Server. So this is built by the same guys that built Task Warrior, right? If you want to work in the team, you may want to check out Task Server. Say I want to have a sync task management system with my family, I can. But I'll show you my own setup, leveraging on GitHub to sync my tasks across different machines and to keep a big backup of my tasks. I do want to point out about Task Server so you could check it out on your own. But let me show you what I do with it. In my home directory, I have a directory called Wolves. In there, I have a few things. Um, there is this thing called the task. If I show you task, this is all my data. All of the tasks, all the tasks, whether they're completed or not, depending, they're waiting for something, all the backlogs, all of them are in this folder task. So what I can do is I could then set up a sync, which I did here. And I may have to cancel some part of this video because I don't want to show you um, my credentials and stuff, but it's really simple. It sets up my credential, it does an add, it does a push. Putting all my tasks into this directory, I would then regularly sync. Every time I make some changes at the end of the day, at the end of a work day, I would sync, and then all my tasks would then be on GitHub, but in the private repo, and then on at home, I could then just do a git pull and all my tasks will be updated. Uh, in fact, it's not just my tasks, a lot of my productivity system, my notes, my task warrior tasks, my dot files, my configuration files, all of that are all in my words, and I would then sync it using a private repo and so that I have the same setup, I have the same configuration and the same tasks across all my different machines. I'll show you how I set it up first, but I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my bed and show you here task RC. So the first thing we want to change is in line number 14. So if you see this is a data location, there is a default location. I forgot where the default is, but I've changed that to be world's task because this is where I put everything that I need to synchronize. Alright, so that's the first thing I want to change. All right, so I copy all the old files and you can copy all the old files doing CP and then recursively and you can say copy all of that from the task folder into wherever you want to sync it. So I'm going to put walls in task, yeah, maybe something like this so that I could benefit from my sync server that I set up. Then you will delete the old task folder, you delete this folder and then you perform a sync. Clearing everything, let me just print out. There is a backlog data, completed data. If I just show you the last maybe kill entry, show you a few of my completed data. You will see a few uh, tasks here. And I'm only gonna show you three because otherwise it's gonna be too much. Privacy is a big thing in 2023, so you're not gonna see all my tasks there. But you will see my tags of each task. So this is one task and you see there is practice task warrior using documentation. This is very long ago. This is when I first installed it. Probably one of the first thing I did when I uh, installed task warrior, I learned how to use it through the documentation. I have a status, it's completed. I have an entry, I have a date time, end time, due time, I have a tag, live OS terminal. So this is a lot of uh, many, many, many different months ago, right? I have the different tags on it. Um, there is also another task here. There's a description. And again, the start time, end time. Um, I could also have the tags and stuff. So there's another task here. So there's all together three tasks. The first task, second task, and the third task. And what you notice is that all these tasks are in simple text format, file formats, and they're all text files. So if you want to, you could just copy and paste them into a text editor. You can edit them. You can even edit them in Veeam and then save them. No proprietary format, no vendor login. If you can edit it in a text editor, you can edit it in Task Warrior. And that's great because the to-do app system that you're using today could be sold to Microsoft next year, but Task Warrior is just plain text file. Is there a more dependent system than that? Point number six, creating your own reports. Remember how we set up our own UDA? So you can also modify reports so that your attributes show up in your report. For example, uh, let's go back to that again, and I'm gonna print out my task RC. And if I go all the way to the bottom, 
you will see that I have this uh, adding effort and score in my text next report. So I'm actually modifying the next report. So let me open up my terminal here, open up a split terminal here. So one of the report is called the task next. This is showing all the next tasks you should be working on. You see here that in task next, I modify that to add new labels and I add the labels to be ID, that's here, H, that's here, dependencies, I don't have any, and then P, that's a priority, and then I add the effort. And so this is a small effort, medium effort, low effort, small effort, medium effort. And then I have the project, I have the tag, recurring, recursive or not, deal until description, urgency, and then there's a score. And I can modify this text report. If I want to create a new report view where I don't want to see this column, I could do that. And to see a list of all the reports, we don't need this, so let's close that out. You could do a task report to see all the different reports. So this is pretty long, right? And that's point number seven. The all the built-in reporting and visualization that you can do, or you can add your own, you can create your own visualization if you want to. Now in task report, you can see there is the burn down daily, shows a graphical burn down chart by day, shows a graphical burn down chart by month, by week. There is the completed G3, show a graphical report of task history. There's a lot of options here. I'll give you a few that I use a lot, right? I'm gonna clear the screen. Some that I use a lot is the burn down weekly and daily. So if I show you a weekly, it gives me a sense of how much tasks I've started and how much of them I've got done. So it gives me this, this is 2020. So I'm at the end of it. This is the final week of 20, uh, 2022 from somewhere like mid year all the way to the last week of the year. This is how much tasks I've started, how much tasks I've got done and how much tasks is still impending. And if you don't want to see this in weekly, you could see this in monthly. So I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to say task, burn down, dot monthly. And now I see it in monthly. So I have the 2022, this is March is when I started using it. And now it's December and this is how much I've got done and how much of that is still started and how much of that is pending. It give me an estimated completion. It says based on your current speed, you're gonna complete everything, all your tasks by 28th of February. So nine weeks from now. If you don't wanna see the monthly burn down, you could use a G history. So there's something like this, G history. And by the way, if you can't remember all the options, you can rely on auto completion as well, right? So I could put dot and put tab, it gives me this. It says annual, daily, monthly, weekly. So it shows a graphical report of task history by year, by day, month, or week. So I'm gonna go ahead and say monthly because that's what I typically do. And it's give me a list of all the uh, tasks that I've added and completed and give me this graphical chart or plot, right? So how many tasks I've started, how many of them I've completed. So this is how it looks like, my productivity looks like. That's that's great, that's fantastic. And I'll show you another auto completion. I said task history. This is also another one I use occasionally. So this is with the G history, this is without that. Uh, again, if I press tab, it gives me a, a list of the different options to complete it for me. And I could again pick monthly. And now instead of showing it in graphical form, it just shows it to me in this tabular form. There are so many more reports, and honestly, you should just go and take a look at them. Task report shows you all of the different options. I'll leave it to you to explore, right? If you want to use due dates and schedule dates for when you want to start a task or when to finish a task, you can also use task calendar. So I'm going to show you task calendar real quick. Uh, clear the screen, task calendar. And here you can see a calendar view of all your tasks with the colored legend. You can see the today, weekend, due, due today, overdue, scheduled, week number. And you can change the colors, all of this in task uh, RC, which is the configuration file. So you can re really make this truly yours. Uh, personally though, my productivity system is based on tags and projects as well as impact and effort. I show you about how I customize it to make it work for my own productivity style. So I don't really use calendars. I don't really use um, date and time. I don't like to set a start date or end date. But if you want to, you could use it to. And I can think of one example of that is, say you want to schedule a visit to the dentist, but you don't want to start this task until two weeks before the actual appointment. So let's say the actual appointment is somewhere in February or in March, and you don't want it to appear on your task system until uh, two weeks before that. So if you add a date and you say, this, you can only start this task maybe on the second week of February, then you can use the dates for that. You can say that that is when you can start the task, that is when the due date is, and so on and so forth. Speaking of dates and time, Task Warrior love dates, and he has a very rich vocabulary for dates. So I could add a task and say task add, pay the rent, and I add a deal, and I could just put 2015-0131, and that would just give me 31st of January of 2015. I could also modify that, and I could change the date, and I can say due, and give it a new due date. So instead of 2015, I could say 2020, I could do that as well. Or you could just use read, uh, show you that as well. And I told you that it has a very rich vocabulary in terms of around the date system, so you could use it with for example, you could use a four digit year, use a hyphen, two digit month, and then you can also use any of these possible, uh, they call it elements of date format. And I think a lot of programmers will find this very familiar, like M, lowercase d, uppercase d, lowercase m, uppercase m, lowercase y, and then there's the synonyms. So you could also say pay the rent due EOM, and EOM would mean end of month. So EOD would mean end of the current date, 
SOD start of the next day. Uh, you can say today, you can say due today, you can say due now, you could also say due later, start February, start January, end of year, start of year, start of quarter, end of quarter, start of the month, end of the month. Uh, you can even have occasions like Good Friday, you can have Easter, Easter Monday. And another one that I think uh, is a little bit underrated, more people should be using it, is the end of week or end of work week. So this is the start of the work week, which is always going to be Monday. Not even going to be Sunday, but end of, uh, but it's going to be the Monday because that's the start of work week for most people. And the end of the work week would be Friday night. So because I want to complete this by the end of the work week. So EOWW, you can say due. So I could do something like task. Let me show you that. I said modify. Now I have task number one, actually task number five. Let's say script task warrior. I want to say that. And I want to say modify that. Then I'll add a deal. I say EOWW. So that's like end of work week. And if I hit enter, it will say modifying. And now it's modified. If I hit task, now it gave me a due date. And because today is the Thursday, due date is one day from there. So it calculates that and it pass it on to the due column. And I think that's really amazing. So you could write this kind of in, in almost natural language. You can say, uh, modify this. I need to complete this by the end of due date. Uh, I could do another one. I could say due and due. I could say three months, 3M. And now if I print my task, it says that I have 12 weeks to complete that, um, but I have one day to complete this. And you notice that when I change the date, due dates, it, mo it modified the urgency as well. So it bumped the value up from 5.25, or actually rather 4.47, it bumped it up to 6.87. Same thing here, 17.7, it used to be 9.5, it bumps it up to 17.7. So it sorts out the urgency based on the, the score and the effort and then the due date. And you can modify how much of that how much of the weights of the, or the coefficients of each of these different attributes. You can say that I want to really, really put a strong emphasis on score. So tasks with a high score should have a very high influence or high weight or high coefficient in terms of the urgency, and you can do that as well. So you can really program it all the, the way you want it. Okay, point number nine is about context. If you want to use context, you can do that as well. I don't really use context all that much because I use a lot of like projects and tags and stuff like that to take care of my task system. But you could do something like task, context and then you could maybe create context define context in the first place so you can begin by defining a context you can say first i want to define context let's say i want to define deep work and i want to say that anytime i'm working on where the project is let's say i have a new project called fellowship so i'm going to call it fellowship or i want to say that any projects that has the blockchain for example or has python for example or react for example i could do it like this so i'm defining a context called deep for any projects that meets this condition, okay? And then I could define another context, maybe the cost work, for example, and I would say something like project. Uh, it's algorithm because that's my company, or project super type, because that's my other company. Or if they're not in a project, fine if they're a text. So I can say if the text has algorithm or super type. So that will define a context called work. And then what I can do is I can then, once I define a context work, I could then say text, Task context work. Here it says context works is not found because I did not set up a context called work. But if I did, it would then set the context to work. And now from now on, if you do tasks and without you doing any filtering, it's only going to show you tasks that meet the context. So you want to switch in and out of a context. If you're at work, you want to say task context work. If you're at home, you can say task context home. And so it will very intelligently wrap your context around what really matters based on all those conditions. And you can define more context and maybe use more context. That's something that I plan on incorporating in the future, maybe somewhere in the, uh, once I got past the, maybe the first one or two years of using Task Warrior, I may think about incorporating that, but so far I didn't really use it to maximum effect. And finally, point number 10 is on the ecosystem around Task Warrior. Now Task Warrior is great out of the box, it does so much, but you can also extend it with your own or your, uh, third party extensions. I have a video playlist on creating your own gamification scoreboard with Task Warrior. If you wanna learn more about Python uh, object-oriented programming along the way, and you want to learn how to write the command line utility tool, you can check it out. The end product is also deployed to PyPI, so you can just go ahead and install it with pip. So I could say something like pip install task one. Um, here I already have it installed, and I can say tq week, and it will just print out all of the tasks. Um, this is broken down by week, 
So week number 31, week number 32, I can see how many tasks I completed, how many points I accumulated. So it's a very simple gamification system for myself. Maybe you're a beginner in object-oriented programming, you want to learn how to write command line, utility tools and stuff, go and check out the whole playlist. Okay, the end product, you can install that, pip install task quant. Quant is short for quantified self. If you want to build your own productivity or gamification system, but it's still a beginner at coding up real-world applications, then the playlist is like seven or eight videos long, and it's a good place to start since it takes you all the way to uploading your tool as a Python package that anybody in the world can install with PIP. But if you don't think it's cool to build your own gamification system on top of it, then use an existing one developed by fellow Task Warrior hackers. There is this thing called the Task Warrior Habitica Bridge. I think some of you may have heard of Habitica. I'm not sure how many of you heard of it. But you could check out this project and then you, you would need to get a Habitica uh, ID and API key. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a gamification system. Motivate yourself to achieve your goals. If you want to integrate Task Warrior with that, you can. And you set up your goals then you earn points and you complete them. And it's even available on Apps on Google Play. So I'll let you go and check it out on your own, all right? Now, if you don't like the user experience for Task Warrior for whatever reason, I don't know how, why you don't like it, but if you want to customize it and code up your own like others have done with Weed, for example, then you can, and you can change the statics, you can change the dot .files, use the terminal user interface, find some alternative. There's a lot of user interface that are built on top of Task Warrior. I said I'll do 10 reasons why you should check out Task Warrior, but I'll throw in a bonus since it's the holiday season and everybody should get a little something. And that's point number 11. Now, recession is a time for self-reflection and Task Warrior is a great tool for that. So every week I like to do a little bit of review and self-reflection and Task Warrior comes with a review feature that is very useful for that. So why is it important to review your task list? Because your energy and willpower is a finite resource and you want to be spending it on tasks that truly matter with a high impact in the system that we set up, right? We have the score, we have the effort. So you want to set up something, you want to set up a task with high impact score, you want to focus on those tasks. So you also want your task list to be up to date with the ever shifting priority. So during review is when you can bump up the priority of tasks that are important, but you haven't got to it yet, or you can delete tasks that are no longer relevant. So you do it with the task shell and that's T-A-S-K-S-H and then you say review. So there are a list of commands here, list, review and stuff. You want to use this one. So I could say review. And now I will start reviewing my tasks. So for example, this is the first one. It said the review process is important for keeping your list accurate so you are working on the right task. Especially with the looming recession, you have a task manager that can that even care that you work on the right task, right? They can catch up to the real world events and help you stay on top of things. For each task you are shown, look at the metadata, determine whether the task needs to be changed. You hit E to edit or whether it's accurate. You enter R or mark as reviewed. You may skip a task, but a skip task is not considered review. You may stop at any time and resume later right where you left off. I could look at this task and the UDA score, it gave me a breakdown of that. And this is in the urgency score. I could look at the virtual text, I could look at the description and the status. And if I have this task as a pending task, it would then add the virtual text pending. I haven't even got time to talk about all of this stuff. It's just there's such a rich system in here. Uh, very quickly, I could modify the task. I could say this is completed, This is I want to delete the task, I could edit the task. If I want to skip it right now, I could just say skip, hit enter, it moved me to the next task. Now this is the second task, upload. Regression models are uh, 12 hours video. I have a 12 hours video. I haven't got to upload it yet. I can mark it out as whether it's reviewed or not. I can modify the task. I can complete it, delay it, but I can just quit it out right now as well. So I'm gonna quit it out. And that's it for 10 reasons why I love Task Warrior and why it's a productivity system for anyone who wanna take their productivity seriously. And if you don't have it installed yet, hop over to the download page. You can look for the latest table release. You could just follow the instructions. These are the distributions. These are the commands. Follow the instruction and have it installed, right? But if you already have it and you would like to build out your tooling on top of it, you want to check out my playlist on building a CLI scoreboard with Task Warrior. And that would take you all the way through from building a tool, uh, working on CLI, writing unit tests, and then deploying and then putting out a PyPI where it becomes a pattern package. Anyone can download your tool and use it. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. See you next time. Bye.